Four days later, a tip-off led them to arrest Venables and Thompson. They were both just ten years old. The boys were taken to separate police stations where they gave a total of 20 interviews over three days. You're under caution and you do not have to say anything unless you wish to do so, but anything you say may be given in evidence. Now you understand that, don't you, John? Yeah. Right. I have a photograph here, which is a video camera photograph. That's for me. That's for me. So the boy holding James's hand is you. Yeah. And the boy ahead of you, in the, in the dark jacket and trousers, Robert Thompson. And what was it you told us? James. Right. Now, I know that took a lot of doing. I can't tell you anything else. Right. That's the worst bit. Right, OK, right. I know that's the worst bit, but you know what you did. Right. Think about it. Right. And just tell us what happened. We took him on the rail and shot him and started throwing bricks at him. And then... Who, who did? Robbie. Why did he throw bricks at him? No. Where did the stick, where did the stones and the bar hit him? In the head. Was he bleeding? I oh, don't either. Where was he bleeding from? The face. Then it was Robert's idea to kill him. OK. So finish now, because I can't speak anymore. You have to look upon both boys uh, quite separately. In Venable's case, uh, in the interview, he was quite emotional. Um, he was subject to breaking down. His activities in the interview room were quite bizarre, in so much he'd get up, he'd walk round, and he'd throw himself at one of the detectives for comfort and support. In Thompson's case, he was completely different. He was streetwise well above the age of 10. In his interview, Thompson blamed John Venables for the killing. He hit him where exactly? In the face. In the face. I think he hit him in the eyes. And he hit him in the eyes. Right. <laughs> now, was James making any noises then? He was knocked out. He was knocked out. Was he moving at all? No. 